As I said, my name is Ronnie Ephraim, I'm from Mellanox, and uh, we want to talk about uh, virtual switch uh, hardware acceleration. I will jump to the slide. Uh, first, I want to talk what is a V switch. Uh, we have uh, many, few, few, few v virtual switches in Linux. We are uh, all familiar with the Linux bridge, the old one and the good one. Um, and currently, the new one, the new kit in the block is the OpenV switch. That is the difference between, between them. It's that the OVS is a flow base. And we also have uh, the Mac VLAN one that is a kind of a switch. But uh, he don't do learning. That's, I think, the main difference. But all of them are virtual switches. And we want to offload, the, to offload the, all of them to the hardware as possible. Uh, so I just want to remind you uh, what modern NIC uh, capabilities are. So we can classify any layer two, layer three, and layer four, the tunneling, and also the inner headers in the tunneling. Usually almost all the new NICs can do it. Um, we can do action, like uh, with those classification, needed to drop packets. So we can drop them in the hardware. You don't need to, to forward them to the CPU in order to drop packets. Uh, and we can also mark them. To, to, after the classification, we can mark them with a, with a flow ID. You know that you don't need to do the, the a reclassification in the software. Uh, we, we support, all the NICs support multi-queue. And when I say multi queue it's not more than a hundred, even thousand, even a million uh, queues we can use in the in the NICs. Uh, of course, for every queue, we can do a rate limiting, we can do a, um, a, bandwidth, a, a scheduling, like a, a weighted, uh, weighted run robin between them, and give a different weighted for each of, uh, each of them. Um, the modern NICs also support uh, SRIV, which is a, a totally embedded switch that all the switch pipeline can be done in the hardware. Uh, we also support other things like uh, RDMA and even uh, packet pacing for each uh, queue. Uh, many of those things are like a switch, so we want to take them into the hardware and to help uh, accelerating a virtual switch. So I will go ahead uh, quickly to remind you what is uh, typically packet processing of a, a pipeline of a switch. So packet processing uh, starts with uh, parsing. So you need to parse the packet in order to get the, the fields and classify the classified in order to look up it. Um, then usually you push or pop the, the VLAN header. Uh, if it's a VX, if it's a tunneling, so you need to incap or decap uh, the villa, the sorry, the tunnel header, and you also need to do some uh, quality of service uh, things like uh, shaping, uh, marking, and scheduling it, or also metering. And at the end, you need to do the switching to the to the external to the to the interface that you want to to switch it to. And those of, all of those uh, things can be done also in the hardware using the modern NICs. So we want to try to offload most of the, uh, as much as possible into the hardware and not to, and to, 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 take, them, to take them to the hardware in order to, to relief the, the CPU to do other, th other things. So we, we can support uh, many classification uh, so we can classify about any L2 uh, field like source mark, D mark, VLANs. We can classify uh, layer two, source IP, DIP, uh, protocol, and those kind of thing. We can support uh, L4 if it's a source, a destination port, and even the, the flags of TCP. Uh, all of them, layer three can be also IPv6. It's also work. And also classification about the tunneling, if it's what is the VNI or those kind of things. And even to have a classification of a 12 tuple, like uh, all the layer three, layer four, uh, in, on the inner header. So it's like a 24 tuple, so it's a very pretty 
more of the things that then you want to classify on a packet till layer four. Uh, the action that uh, can be done, it's of course, can be drop the packet or allow a flow, a, mark the, the flow with a flow ID, a count it, forward it to a specific ring or a queue, a push or pop a VLAN or incap or decap the tunnel header. Uh, I think last week we submitted an RFC by Amir Vadai, uh, how to use TC filter in order to, to offload it to the hardware. Um, anyone saw those uh, patches? Yeah, cool. So Amir is not, with, uh, Amir not here, but uh, I'm speaking on behalf of him. So the idea was uh, to allow uh, uh, to, to have an uh, egress classifier and, for example, to drop uh, an ICMP packets. So you need to use uh, TC and to have um, uh, the protocol. Uh, okay, so we, we're using the, flow cl the flower classifier. Um, we can also use the U32. It's, I think, we, we think that uh, the flower classifier is more user friendly and also for the hardware user friendly. Uh, so that's we, the reason we go with the flower classifier. And we can, like in this example, uh, we classify the IP protocol, the ICMP, it's so IP protocol number one, and we do an action uh, to drop it. And the last line before the last, the last one, the, iter the offload means that say take it to the hardware. So the classification and the, the action to drop the packets is done in the hardware, and those packets won't uh, won't trouble the CPU. So Jamal, you, you, in your presentation, you saw us how many packets you can drop in the CPU. So I think it's not a problem to drop uh, 10 million packets per second. So it's, yeah, or even more. Um, OK, so and this is the only drop, this is the example for dropping a packet. Uh, I think a nice thing is also it's uh, to offload the, the classification of the packets. So what we here see this in this example, so we classify the packets. Here we classify for a TCP packets. And um, also the action is to offload it. Uh, sorry, the, we offload it to the hardware. And the action is to do SKB edit to this packet and to mark this packet for the specific flow. So it means every packet that's come from the NIC that's match this uh, classifying we come with a, with a cookie, and the cookie will be in the SKB mark. And for, in this example, we, we put a one, two, three, four. So the next layer can do everything without classifying the packet. So you don't need to, re to reclassify the packets. You don't need to go to the, to the, to the, to the, to the, to the packet itself, to the memory buffer. So you can have you can continue to do the things without classifying, without uh, touching the data. Uh, it can resolve the, the cache miss and uh, all those same things. And so here we have an example of what we're doing with, the, what, with this uh, SKB edit. So here we use it in the software classifier uh, to, do, uh, to, make, to count how many packets was with the, this, uh, with, on this uh, type of traffic. So we're classifying about uh, packets with a mark with a one, two, three, four, and the action is to, to pass in order to, just, to count them, just to count them. Uh, of course, the, the use case that we want to use, it's not to count the packets. It's more than uh, to, to, to do an offload for a switch. And I think the, the most uh, one that will gain from it will be the open v switch, which is uh, classifying for many, uh, many fields, and it can gain a lot of uh, performance. And in order to, to do it, I think this is my opinion that I think it can work good with uh, open v switch, is to use the TC. So if let's, let's have an example, like uh, obvious one to do an action Y, 
uh, for a specific flow like X. So what is used? He will use a TC to offload, to mark packets with one, two, three. For every flow X, with, um, to mark them with an ID that he is generating. And then in the data path of the OVS, he don't need to reclassify the packet, just need to look on the SKB mark. And if the SKB mark gives this ID, he can just to the action that um, have this uh, ID. So it can result, can, uh, it's, you don't need to do all the classification. I think most of, if you need to classify about 24 uh, tuples, like um, inner packets of a VXLAN or something like that, it can resolve a lot of uh, CPU. And I think that's, that's a nice thing. And of course, you can, if the action is to drop, it's uh, much uh, easier. Just uh, add a uh, TC action uh, to drop this packet. But uh, obvious using an aging mechanism, so we also need to count those packets, how many packets we are dropping. So we can use a hardware, uh, the hardware also to count how many packets it dropped. And in order to maintain the, the aging of this uh, rule, that obvious won't uh, age it. Okay, this is a more thing that's on the ideas and not a, an, an RFC code that we are publishing. It's um, how to egress and egress uh, QoS, like rate limiting and bandwidth guarantee for each VM or a virtual or it's a virtual port of a, of a switch. So we'll start with from the egress. Uh, so we would like to egress um, to. to uh, per, per VM or per uh, port that's come to the, to the virtual, virtual switch. And we want to do it on the external port. So first what we need to do, we need to classify those packets into queues. And this is done by the software. So it's very, very easy to do it with a Mac VTAP because it's, it's a specific queue for each of the Mac VTAP. And if it's an um, open vSwitch or a Linux bridge, uh, we need to use a TC in order to classify them into a specific, uh, specific queue. And then we can, we can use the TC uh, to do um, a rate limiting in the hardware, now not to do it in the software, to do a, a rate limiting in the hardware and also a weighted, uh, to give weight for each uh, queue so we can give a different uh, benefit allocation for each VM. I think also this uh, can offload, can, can solve some uh, things that uh, today you have many timers in order to do it in the software. So this is for the egress. And of course to the ingress, if we want to have, um, uh, we, can do, we can have um, classifying of course uh, in the hardware. And uh, when we do the classification, uh, we can have a separate uh, bring for each of the uh, each of a, a kind of traffic. If it's a virtual port or a sort of a destination MAC, so we're classifying and we're using the TC in order to to offload this classifier to the hardware, and then to forward it to a specific ring. So we can have a specific ring for each uh, for each uh, virtual port. Uh, currently, I spoke about the rings, but each of them, each of logical queue can be support like an RSS or TSS, so it's not supposed to be only a single ring, it's a, it can be a, a queue can be a, a ring per, per core or something like that. So we don't need to, to block the stack. Um, I think we, we try to, we see from customers are many demand for a complex environment. So a nesting uh, virtual switches, switches. So for some example, we see that in the v, you have a multiple VM and each VM you have a, a multiple containers. So it's like an hierarchy of uh, two levels of, uh, of virtual switches. And this is cost doubled in the standard uh, virtual, uh, virtual switch. Course. 
And so we have uh, three options to how to, to take it into the hardware. So we can go directly with uh, SRIOV, like a virtual function to each container. I think this is the most the most hardware, effect, uh, most hardware uh, effective way. Um, and then we will have to, to have in the hardware two virtual sw uh, two switches, imb two embedded switches that each of them uh, managed by, uh, one of them is managed by the hypervisor and the second one is managed by the, by the VM. And this is can done in the hardware. And I think more, something more, and the other opposite is to use like today, two virtual switches, like uh, two OVS that is running, one in the hypervisor and one in the virtual machine, and, uh, and accelerate it, uh, the first one, of course. I think in the, in the third option is to combine them and to use SRIOV for each VM. And each VM can run, an OVA, uh, run a, virtual, uh, bri a virtual bridge and we can use all the acceleration we spoke about before in this uh, virtual switch. So we can gain a lot of things from the hardware. We can bypass, we don't need to, to have any switch, any virtual switch in the hypervisor. And in the VM, we can get the accelerating uh, virtual switch. So when we start to, to, to work on it, it was obvious for us that it's going to use a, a switch dev because we're talking about switches, 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 everything was switch. And when we even we submitted it with a switch dev, but then someone told us, hey, it's not a switch, you're talking about a NIC. And it's correct. It's a, it's a NIC command, it's not a switch, but, most, uh, but all of them are, gain, are uh, related to how to accelerate the virtual switch. We can think about things that we'll do for, uh, for switch, uh, for not, not for switch dev, so we have a debate if it's, uh, it's supposed to be an NDO or a, or a switch dev. Uh, but I think another reason that we want to, to be a switch dev, because we also, last time I was uh, spoken about how we full offload all the virtual, all the switch into the hardware when you're using an SRIOV. And also there, if we want to take, to take from the user space, like from OVS or into the hardware, what the, what the action to do with uh, every classification, we can use the same traffic, the same TC API that we saw before. And the action will be instead of give it, uh, give it SKB edit to it, just forward it to a specific virtual function. So the same API can be used uh, for a full offload. Um, I think this is, will be nice because it's a single API that can do both of the things. So the, I think the API for sure need to be a, a TC API if it's a switch dev or not switch dev in the kernel, it's, it's more than an implementation issue. That can be, I think we're going to cover it in one of the both. Any questions? Pablo, how much time we have? Hi, thank you. Yeah. Uh, I had a question about where do you count how many drops are done for a rule match, or can you count those drops when you're doing TC rule matches? Um, can you, what is specific asking? When you're dropping packets in the NIC, yeah. can you count how many you drop? Yes, of course, that's what I, uh, in the example which I saw right now, what I, uh, you, I, you see, it's counting in the software, but we can also count in, in the hardware. We have many counters in the hardware that you can, uh, for every flow, I can count in it. So I can count. We're using it also for the full offload, that we need to count all the packets what you're forwarding on, on not only dropping, but of course you can, every packet you can drop, you can have a specific counter for each flow. So when you said you're counting them in the software, it's, you, that means that the packet's being DMA'd into the host and being handled by the driver? To no, 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 no. The example, uh, what we saw right now, 
was a counting of packets that you don't drop, that you SKB edit them. We can count every packet in the hardware. So if you drop the counter, you can, for this specific flow, you can add a counter, and you have a counter for each flow. For each classification, you can have a counter in the hardware. Okay, thanks. Oh, I, so so uh, the reason I, I, I was the one that commented on the NIC versus switch dev stuff, and the reason I said NIC is because uh, uh, we have devices that do not do SROV at all and still want to offload. Basically, put a TCAM in front of a standard NIC. But anyways, we can talk about that later. The, the, the point I, I wanted to raise is I, I was a little curious about your OBS offload. In, in that example, you're, you're offloading the flow classification, I think, um, but from the exact match table in OBS and not the mega flow table. It seems like you're going to be very uh, underutilize your hardware. Is that what you observed? Why? Because I think why? Because those are those are low level exact match, right? What you want to be able to do is get things that are highly wild carded and into your TCAM or your SRAM or it's, whatever the heck your implementation is. It, it's the panel of the hardware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but most of most of the hardware, and I believe your hardware, um, is a lot more capable than just that exact match table in OBS. Yes, but in this case, we we get all the benefit of uh, Open vSwitch. Yeah, but that's just because it would be much better if you could take the Megaflow table in OVS, which has all of that kind of richness that you need, and put that in the hardware. Yo, so this is taking the Megaflows. It's it is taking the Megaflows, the Megaflows, but that's, that's not what you passed down through the kernel then. So then changing OVS to, to throw the Megaflows into T via TC. Yes, so what you're taking about to take the open flow rule and yeah. to take all the, the switching things that's okay. in the upper layer of the open vSwitch. Okay, so you modified OVS is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. All right. That's, I just wasn't clear from your slides. It looked like you were taking the exact match. But okay. Great. Uh, sorry. Sorry. Um, we we are recording. Uh, we need that you take the mic. So that was just an example in the slide to make it clearer. But you would take uh, you would take a megaflow from user space. You put it into the through the TC into the hardware. And you can match on wildcards and then produce this packet mark. So it was just. Um, Example in this slide. Okay, John, you, you got it. <laughs> okay, uh, guys, just one thing. Um, this is talk. We have limited time, and we'll have a both, yeah, yeah. and we have uh, we have two two both scheduled sure. one for switch depth. So after John's, we'll be over. Okay. Okay, I was just gonna say that's fine. We can talk about it in the both. Is all <laughs> I was gonna say. Okay. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.